Hey, Steve Bionni here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts. This is a 1987 Pontiac Fiero. You'd be forgetting if you don't know what a Pontiac is. Well, you know, of course, Pontiac was one of the many General Motors divisions uh, that went away along with Oldsmobile maybe uh, 20 years ago, whatever it is. But here's the thing. The Fiero was built between 1984 and 1988. Eight. And in fact, this is a mid-engine car. The motor's not up front. So while you might think the C8 Corvette is a brand new thing with its mid-engine power plant, no, 33 years earlier, the Fiero led the way. Now here's the thing. While today's Corvette C8 is truly a world-class supercar, it'll take on almost any Ferrari or Lamborghini you can name and run right with it. These were not quite in that same league. The downside to the Fiero was basically it was born to be an economy car, a fun economy car, kind of like the Toyota MR2 in a weird way, or a Fiat X19, but again, no V8s, no turbos, nothing big under the hood. And speaking of that hood, don't look for it up here. This is the cargo compartment big stuff. And with that said, these have plastic bodies, something called SMC, sheet molded compound, kind of like Corvette fiberglass in the C4 era, but again, a steel understructure, but these are plastic cars. The beauty being that they don't rust out, except for from the inside. We'll talk about that in a minute. But again, these were strictly two-door, two-seaters. There were never any wagons, although some prototype four-seaters were built by GM Engineering, but this ain't one of them by any stretch. And the neat thing about this, if you were a single person or a very new family person with maybe an infant or no kids yet, this would be a fun car for you to own for your last hurrah. But again, under the hood of these things was either a 2.5 liter four cylinder, the Iron Duke pushrod engine, or the 2.8 liter pushrod V6, a very narrow 60 degree piece, kind of interesting, same stuff used under the, the hood of the Citation and a variety of other small economy cars. But inside this one, it's you know, kind of a spiffy place. Uh, it has an 85 mile an hour speedometer, as these all had pretty much. Uh, an automatic, as the vast majority also had. And while 320,168 Fieros were built between 84 and 88, in 1987, production dropped to 45,581, of which two thirds were four cylinder powered. Now, there's some stuff we can learn about inside this one, and we can actually see the paperwork from whoever owned this way back when. And Larissa Kangas owned this car back in, uh, oh, I don't know, 25 or whatever years ago. A little bit of a typo. You can see right here that it says uh, HP. Well, that's the code for the 1988 model year. Uh, or sorry, H HP, whatever. This is a 1987, not an 88, as it says here. So it's an 87. Now, 88's a different thing. We'll talk about that in a second. But Larissa Kangas was probably a cool chick going to the disco, hanging out with her buddies in her brand new Fiero back in the day. Here are the plates. This is kind of wacky. Vermont plates, which I don't think have ever been used on a car. Look at this. Nice, clean, crisp Vermont license plates. But again, automatic transmission here. Nothing too exotic. But again, not a lot of room for stuff. You fold the seat forward. There's a bit of a cargo area back here, but that's kind of about it. Now, by this point in time, the speakers for the stereos were built into the center console, but for the first couple of years, the speakers were actually built into the headrests of the bucket seat. Now, some things we can see about this one are, well, world-class rust. Look at this, the door anchor pin right here. Look at the booger weld. Somebody welded the snot, and I do mean snot, it's not welded. Look at that thing. Somehow this thing must have gotten loose, and that's the inner structure, the steel thing right here. So these are absolutely capable of rusting, but look at that booger weld. Somewhere along the line, the door hinge probably sagged, and somebody whipped it back together for one last go around. But uh, the engine in these things is in the back, and I can't get the engine bay open on this one here. Just doesn't want to go, and I don't want to force it. But we don't want to confuse the Fiero with the Fiat X19. This puppy right here, 1972 through 1989. Similar stuff, but the deal is the X19 did have a targa roof that could be removed. By contrast, no Fiero ever had a removable roof panel. They were always fixed roof cars. Not a big problem, but for 1986 and a half, something called the Fiero Fastback arrived on the scene with basically extended B-pillars right here. They kind of gave it an aerodynamic look, but again, it was completely for looks. There was no extra capacity inside, but the Fiero Fastback, 86 and a half through 88, was a pretty cool looking car, but most of them were basic coupes like this one here. Now, getting back to 1988, this is the Pontiac Road Cars catalog for the 1988 model 
monumental year, and 88 was the year that Pontiac got Fiero right. What do I mean by that? Well, here it is right here. It's similar in appearance, but if you look at the roof line, it's quite a bit different, but under the skin, much better upgraded suspension, much better brakes, and again, it says here, the suspension on these 88 Fieros is entirely new, but again, only one year, 88 final year for the upgraded suspension under the Fiero, and it says here, uh, total suspension travel increased, wheel spindles 30% shorter for reduced uh, wheel kick and 30% smaller scrub radius, 40% more anti-dive geometry, 20% longer upper control arms, 25% longer lowers, um, revised pivot points, etc. So out in the back, the Tri-Link design with McPherson struts was all new for 88, and again, one year. And this is a fastback, we can see right here, that's purely ornamental, but again, that's a great looking car. But with that said, 88 was the year that Pontiac was supposed to put the 3.1 liter, maybe even the dual overhead cam, maybe a turbo, never materialized. The best engine these things got was a 2.8, which was okay. But again, Pontiac pulled the plug on Fiero in 1988, and that was the end. People said, it just, was just getting good. Why'd they do that? Well, that's how it goes when you're a corporation like General Motors. Now, if we look at the back of this thing, we can see here the fascia, the urethane fascia at the back. But one of the cool things about Fiero was, you know, four-wheel disc brakes, standard equipment, no drums anywhere. And again, these are parts bin items, you know, from the Chevy Citation and even the, uh, the um, Chevette parts bin. But again, disc brakes with aluminum calipers, nothing wrong with that. Uh, coilovers in the back, McPherson strut stuff. And uh, again, the engine is here in the back, so the weight distribution on these things was about ideal, 50-50, if only it had some horsepower. Now, we're going to keep talking about Fieros with tomorrow's video. We're going to compare a couple of interesting cars, so stick around tomorrow for even more Fiero talk. Until then, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Max YouTube channel, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, and that way you'll know when the next video comes out, which is tomorrow morning, when we talk more Fieros.